It's the edit. And prepare for a knockout edition of the edit this week as we bring you a roundup of the royal trip down under. <clears throat> William and Kate, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, travelled to the former colonies of Australia and New Zealand. Plus, they didn't travel alone. More on him later. Anyway, this was a trip full of thrills. With plenty of spills. Of hair-raising moments. and hair-removing moments. Plus, given the two only relatively recently wet, there was still time for plenty of romance. <laughs> on, a, on a quiet night. Or perhaps not. Anyway, the undoubted star of the tour was young Prince George. From the moment they stepped off the plane, all the cameras were on the House of Windsor's latest edition. These days, the royals are a very modern family, and even the youngest member is expected to get out there and meet ordinary people, even if neither party can really understand what's going on. On his first play date, surrounded by adoring females, all clamouring for a feel of the third in line to the throne, young George looks nothing less than kingly, unfortunately that king being Joffrey from Game of Thrones. <laughs> Looks like the reign of George might be a bit more medieval than we're used to. Anyway, it wasn't just the Dauphin having fun down under. Kate was treated to sights not seen since her hen do in Magaluf. And the king to be at some point asserted himself in the face of a traditional Maori welcome. My money's still on the All Blacks. Clearly, Wills later felt the need to assert his masculinity, and what better way to do so than bowling your missus a googly in front of the world's press. Still, at least Kate has the excuse of playing in high heels, not something her hubby's done. Well, not since his uni days. As for William's form, well, it's going to be a bit before he gets his collar. And given the state of the English team at the moment, that's surely saying something. These royal tours do tend to follow something of a pattern. Turn up somewhere, wave at someone, open something. And so it was at the imaginatively titled Prince George Bilby exhibit at Taronga Zoo. The Bilby itself, a small desert-dwelling marsupial, clearly caught George's attention. In fact, he seems positively entranced by it as his parents dangled him so close, yet so far. He was so annoyed, in fact, that he ate the zookeeper's paycheck and gave short shrift to yet another gift. He does, he does love it, honestly. Yeah. He was a well-behaved child and I was amazed. I was amazed he coped with the dark environment of the nocturnal house. And he was like any other child, you know, had a short attention span and wanted to go and look at something else. Which might explain the following. When a baby appeared at the windows of New Zealand's government house, the crowds went wild, although it's ultimately turned out to be an imposter. Perhaps another portent of what lies ahead, George already employing body doubles whilst he's off causing havoc. There were some moments the royal couple shared alone with the world's assembled press and broadcast media. Like their trip to the beach, for example, where they were to enjoy a life-saving demonstration. The prince, however, turned down the opportunity of wearing speedos in favour of more royal attire. Although even the thought of the future king and budgie smugglers was clearly too much for some to take. Having started a history of art degree at university, William even found time to indulge his passion. Graffiti art is all the rage now, even if Banksy probably doesn't even own a double-breasted suit, let alone wear one on his nocturnal painting missions. And as for the art itself, it's not quite a Caravaggio, is it? <laughs> but for many, the hot ticket of the whole tour was Will and Kate back-to-back -back sets on the ones and twos. <laughs> boy slim she ain't although to give both some credit they did get the crowd going by which I don't mean they cleared the dance floor obviously you certainly can't accuse them of not giving things a go 
even if DJing clearly is in the bluest of blood. House of Windsor in the house. It had all gone a little bit Pete Tong, and that continued with a performance from one of Australia's up and coming MCs. <laughs> Watcher wreck the mic. And so the Royal Tour comes to a close. And what's been the reaction? We've all enjoyed waving to everybody that's been going by. Yes, we've really enjoyed it. It's been lovely. I always wanted to be a princess. And this is one of my true life dreams to see a princess. Just hope that, um, I don't know, they will come here at least maybe and we could at least t get a feel of them, touch, um, touch them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but did they mean George? or William. That's the edit.